Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Andy Suggs. I'm a partner and brand strategist here at Reckon Branding. And I'm Travis Sharp, creative director here at Reckon. All right. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to jump on into this. So what we're going to be going over today is how you can start to build a smart brand without having to hire a branding agency. So you'll understand who we are. We're Reckon Branding. Uh, we've been around for a little over 20 years. We're just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And we've been working with our clients to build and activate and manage brands with them. The reason we're doing this is we've realized the importance and the value that understanding how to build a smart brand can provide a young business when they just don't have the budgets to hire a branding agency. So what we're going to be going over with you are what are those foundational exercises that an agency will lead their clients through so you understand the concept and the strategy behind building a brand. And then we're going to give you some resources that you can go download and you can lead your team through to get that focus that you need to make sure that the money and time you're investing internally on creating your marketing materials is being put to the best use possible. We promise if you do these, uh, you will be likely very much ahead of your competitors and your team will be aligned. And that alignment will re give you the best return on your investment when you're creating these documents. So I, I've worked at a bunch of different agencies over the years and at every single one of those agencies, we like to tell potential clients that we had this secret formula that was gonna help them excavate their brand and create this super strong brand for them. But the secret is that secret formula was pretty much the same everywhere I worked, right? We were doing the same sort of things uh, for every brand. So we're gonna pull aside the curtain and let you know that at the core of all of those processes was this idea that instead of selling your what, instead of selling the thing you make or the service you provide, you should sell your why. Why other than making money does your business exist? Why are you doing what you're doing? And just to help you understand what that means, here's a couple of examples of brands who do a great job of that. Apple doesn't sell computers or peripherals or devices. They sell creative self-expression. Harley Davidson doesn't sell noisy motorcycles. They sell rugged individualism. That's what they believe in. And so they're able to create these passionate advocates, which is what every brand should hope to do create passionate advocates by selling your why and not your what. And, and Travis mentioned the brand and that's kind of a esoteric term, but we wanted to dig into a bit what we feel defines your brand. And a common mistake is people think about your logo, your website, your brochure as your brand. That's not your brand. Those support and visualize your brand. What your brand really is, is how you made your customer feel when they were working with you. What would they say to somebody if they were gonna recommend you to one of their peers? And that partnership, that journey, that experience goes well beyond them looking at your website or reading your brochure. So as an example, we wanted to use purchasing a Peloton bike and how many branding opportunities there are in that journey. So we're going to use uh, Jim and Jim, like many of us during the pandemic, got a little lazy, hasn't been getting out as much. So he decided he wanted to buy the exercise bike. He saw an ad that inspired the idea. He went to the website, saw the logo, saw the copy on the website, was interested. He didn't know anybody who owned one. So he went online and looked and read some of the reviews. He's interested. He's like, all right, I'm going to check this out. So he gives them a call, tries to find a location, a retail store, goes out, visits the showroom, sees the bike in person, talks to a sales person there, gets some sales material, collateral, uh, very interested, but being a good um, shopper, he wants to do some research and make sure this is the decision he wants to go. So he then gets a follow-up email, checking in to see how things are going. He um, then also gets a call from the salesman uh, just seeing how the process is going and if he's ready. And at this time, Jim has decided he does want to go ahead and purchase the Peloton bike. So they schedule a link for it to be delivered. 
the product arrives, they unbox it, set it up for him. He then signs up for the extended warranty. He then also gets a survey to see how the experience was. And he also goes online to sign up for a newsletter so he can get more information about the product. Now, when you would think about where does the brand fall into play here, most people would, and understandably so, think about these first four uh, steps in the process. However, we really feel and want people to understand that this whole journey is a branding opportunity. And what's critically important is that if you think about all these different steps, many of them are managed by different people. <clears throat> so if those individuals are not aligned, then they're telling different stories about the brand and unintentionally um, undermining if any efforts you're doing to create a consistent brand voice. So when we talk about what agencies typically do to kind of give you some frame of context for what we're about to dig into, these are what we feel are the standard uh, exercises that most agencies lead their clients through. Doing some research, defining your brand essence, understanding what your archetype is, uh, developing your positioning statement, and then providing a summary document that you can reference moving forward. The first step we talked about is doing some research. So this is critically important before you jump in and start creating anything is you want to understand what's going on in your industry. Where is the white space? What's not being addressed that needs to be solved for your customer? Or what can you do better that your competitors are not doing? You also want to understand what they're saying because you don't want to create a website or messaging that's basically duplicating what's already out there. If you're not defining what's unique about you, it's, it's wasted time and effort. Uh, you also want to interview people who are familiar with your brand and get their perspective. You don't want to just be talking to people who work internally. And those interviews, that would include talking to your customers, talking to your business partners, uh, still definitely talking to your key staff. You want to make sure that those individuals are aligned and then understanding what your competitors are saying. And if you can interview them, you'd be surprised how willing people are to talk about their business and, and share insights into what they have going on. The next thing we want to talk about, Travis will lead you through this, is defining your brand essence. Yeah, I think Andy has made it very clear how important we think uh, brand consistency is. And another one of the ways that we help you find brand consistency is by defining your brand essence. This brand essence is three key words that exist in a little bit of a tension. They don't normally go together. That really describes what your brand is all about. Um, and the way we excavate this is we have a big session with a bunch of these uh, key decision makers and stakeholders and talk about your brand's attributes, benefits, your brand's personality. Just what are you like? Uh, if you were a person, what would that person be like? Uh, why should uh, someone believe what you have to say? What does it say about your audience or your customers? Uh, what does it say about them when they, uh, when they work with your brand? And finally, how does your brand make them feel? So we come up with this huge list of words and phrases and like even short sentences sometimes. And we boil it down to these three words that are authentic to the brand, that are aspirational for the brand and that create um, a unique tension and almost some internal conflict because conflict is where we can tell stories from. And that's your brand essence. Uh, an example, we uh, have, have been working with a client who's uh, opening a restaurant, and we went through this process with them and determined that their restaurant is surprising, southern, and selective. And yeah, we've got some nice alliter alliteration in there, but more importantly, we have these three words that describe something unique. And every single time we have a brand communication, and that could be everything from a website to a social media post to a phone call, we're making sure that we live up to these three words. And if we're not, we're not uh, achieving that brand consistency. And so it kind of helps us. It kind of helps us shape that brand and helps us shape every brand communication. Another thing we uh, like to recommend is figuring out what your brand's archetype is. Um, and by determining what your archetype is, it's going to help you and your entire team understand how your brand walks and talks. And it's going to help your audiences understand who your brand is. 
So there are these 12 archetypes, which are basically 12 types of characters that exist throughout time and culture. They're in, uh, in books and in movies and in literature and in plays, and we all know them. We see them in Star Wars, we see them in the Bible, we see them in mythology. And so by connecting our brand to one of these archetypes, it's gonna help us, us understand how we walk and talk, and it's gonna create that consistency for our audience. So let's look at two brands that do pretty much the same thing. Uh, we, we're looking at um, Dove Men's Care and Old Spice. They make the same products for a very similar audience. But I think it's, you could argue that Dove kind of comes from this caregiver approach. Their, their, um, their archetype is the one that's taking care of you and cares about your health and is like almost has that parental kind of uh, feeling of support. Old Spice is a jester. They're making you laugh. They're having fun. And both of them do a really good job. It's not saying one archetype is right or wrong, but by having an archetype, it helps you be unique and have um, a unique place in your potential audience's minds. So another thing that uh, a lot of brands do, uh, big and small, is they create their positioning statement. And this statement becomes the foundation from which all marketing messages can be built. Again, this is another tool that helps us find that consistency and really understand what our brand is all about. So um, Andy earlier took you through that Peloton model to show you one person's uh, brand journey. Uh, and that journey is built on so many different uh, communications. If those communications are built on the same brand positioning, uh, then there's gonna be that consistency and it's gonna help us get from the brand equity where we are now to the brand equity that we want, which is of course gonna be higher brand equity faster because every opportunity to communicate with an audience is an important opportunity. Uh, this isn't our thing. This is the biggest brands in the world use uh, these positioning statements. Here are two, feel free to pause the video here and read Coca-Cola and Apple's positioning statement, but you'll see that they're built out of four different um, phrases. The first describes our audience, this isn't demographics, this is who they are as people. The frame of reference, which is what makes our brand um, what it is. What is our framework? What do we do? And then the point of difference is, and how do we do it differently? And then final is a little bit of support. Why should, uh, why should anyone believe that? And you put that, those four statements together in one big, long, run-on sentence that really tells us exactly what our brand is all about. So in the end, what do you get? After going through defining your essence and your archetype and your positioning statement, typically an agency will provide to you your brand platform document. Uh, this is incredibly important because it creates that consistency between all your key break, uh, brand stakeholders. Uh, th and this is traditionally at the point then you then launch into activating your brand, creating your logo if you need it or any marketing materials because you understand where you're coming from. We also realize at this point in the presentation, you might be getting a bit overwhelmed. You might be thinking, I don't have the time to do this. I'm not sure if I could understand how to do this. I don't know if I have the money right now to hire somebody. So we realize that this is the point where a lot of companies will just take it on internally. So because of that, we've created some exercises or some resources that are inspired by what we just walked you through, that these are things that you can do on your own that can at least give you a tighter focus and some uh, beginning of a strategy to differentiate your brand from others in your space. And again, these resources are available in uh, a link in the description for the video so you can download them. So the first resource gets to the idea of research. And so this is a sheet that you can use to audit your competitor's website. If you go through and identify who are your three top competitors, answer these questions for each of them, and then also try to, as unbiased as you can, look at your own website and answer the same questions. This will allow you to identify what are some of the claims that are being made and are your claims different from others in your space? Likely you're gonna identify a lot of consistency, but just having this awareness of what's going on helps you understand how to start to create a unique voice. The second exercise starts to get to, we're talking about the uh, archetype. So this is kind of a different way to think about it, but if you were to ask your team to look at all these different celebrities and who would you pick to be the spokesperson for your brand and why did you pick that person? 
So these conversations start to get to some deeper understanding of how your brand will walk and talk, which is really a shorthand for starting to identify who your archetype would be. The next exercise, this is kind of touching on what we're talking about with your essence. So what are the adjectives you describe your brand with? Or what are the adjectives that you feel least describe your brand? So having your team go through and mark with checks the ones that they feel do fit for your brand and then also to X out the ones that they feel don't gives you some uh, really strong insights into how your team sees your brand and how aligned they may or may not be. The fourth resource is getting to understanding the values of your brand. And this is something that's a little unique to us, but this isn't you know, right or wrong or good or bad, but it's just which side of the fence does your brand want to stand on? So when you go through this, what you do is same thing, you pick your three competitors and you chart them in this uh, graph and understand how you think of them. Are they, do they tend to be more casual or do they tend to be more sophisticated? You can't be both. Are you more humble or are you more bold? So as you go through and chart your competitors, you tend to see kind of a follow the leader, pe uh, people cluster together, and then chart your own brand. And you might see some similarities. Traditionally, there are uh, spaces within your industry that brands do, and understandably so, feel very similar. But you'll start to see areas of opportunity where your brand can be more unique and stand out from others in your space. The next exercise is getting to, we we're talking about earlier, kind of what's your why? And these are more statement questions, but asking your team to answer in a sentence, what does your organization do? The second question is, what do you feel that you do better than any of your other competitors? And the third question is, besides to make money, why does your company exist? So when you go through and read the answers, this is a good way to start to unearth from your team's perspective and with your own viewpoint, what is your why? And then the final resource, is, and we believe the most important, is defining and documenting the journey your customer has with your brand so you can ensure that there's the consistency needed. So just like we had uh, with Jim earlier with the Peloton bike, taking this resource and defining the journey for your customer with these red blocks, starting with awareness, over to validation, acquisition, and on to advocacy, you're able to chart the journey of your, of your customer. I would also encourage you to think outside of who purchases your service or your product and who are partners that work with you because they're also an audience that needs to be aware and understand what's unique about your brand. So as you document this journey, underneath we have the blue blocks down here where you can say who owns that step. And so that gives you awareness of what key stakeholders need to be aligned and, and speaking the same voice and what is unique about your brand. So in the end, like any good exercise, you should have the opportunity to grade yourself and see how you're doing. So we have these four questions. Uh, how aligned is your staff? How consistent is the message along your journey? Are you selling yourself and not your industry? And then are your existing marketing materials supporting the messaging and what you're finding unique about your brand? And it very unscientific uh, ranges here. If you happen to be falling between 17 and 20, great, awesome work, keep it up. If you happen to be between 13 and 16, you're doing really good. Obviously there are some areas to improve. Nine and 12, uh, it's not a complete mess. And if you happen between uh, four and eight, it's only up from here, and that's likely why you're here. So hopefully these resources will be of help. And as we mentioned, there's a link in the description for this video. We can download all these resources, which we hope will be of value because as we strongly believe, if you're not defining your brand, then your customer is already doing that for you, which can obviously be a little scary because you have no control over that. If you are thinking about looking into hiring a branding agency, obviously what that costs and what that could be like is quite an unknown for many people. So we've written this blog and as well, there's gonna be a link in our description that will give you some insights into if you have some budgets that you're looking to stay within, what you should expect to get out of that. And usually when you get through going through these resources, there are gonna be some surprises or questions. So we'd be happy to talk with you. So we're gonna include a link in the description for a three 30 minute consultation.
we'd be happy to go over those with you and figure out what would be the best next step. So thanks for taking the time. Hopefully these resources will be of use and give you some guidance and allow you to start to build a smart brand on your own without having to hire an agency at this time. Thanks for your time. Good luck.